Hello all my video editing friends, this is Curtis F. Taylor and welcome to today's overview of how to do the Ken Burns effect in PowerDirector 15, also known as Pan and Zoom, also known as Zoom and Pan. Today we will be focusing on doing this on still images and photographs. My next video will focus on the Zoom and Pan effect using video files. So why should you care about this effect? It is the de facto effect used by almost everyone. It is actually a good effect and can turn simple slideshows, corporate presentations, and some gaming videos into something amazing. You will also use this, like I will today, for when doing instruction videos to focus on certain areas. This is Ken Burns, the American filmmaker who is widely known for his style of using archival footage and photographs and basically taking these somewhat boring images and videos and making them into something that was pleasant to watch during hour-long documentaries in which he had very few resources to work with. That effect you see right now, me zooming in on his face, is the Ken Burns effect. This should not be confused with Kenny Burney, which has a very different effect. Though, if you're paying attention, the pan and zoom effect you see right now is the Ken Burns effect used on the image of Kenny Burney. Hopefully you can see the difference between the two. If not, please read the Wikipedia page on Ken Burns and watch a couple episodes of South Park. So why not just call it pan and zoom? Well, most software packages do, such as PowerDirector 15, but when you are the best at something, then they tend to name stuff after you. True story. You should at least be aware of this, so when talking to people, you can keep the conversation going when someone spouts out something like, I love the Ken Burns effect you used, and you say something stupid like, nah, I just panned and zoomed. To perform pan and zoom in PowerDirector 15 on images, first thing, of course, you need an image. We're going to choose the sunrise image today. All right, this is a stock photo that comes with the PowerDirector 15, so everybody should have it. And to actually do the pan and zoom, you need to use something called Magic Tools, which is located right here. It's the little wand with the two stars. And when you click on it, you'll notice you get four options. The Magic Movie Wizard, Magic Fix, Magic Motion, and Magic Style. What we want to play with today is Magic Motion. Now, when this opens up, you'll notice that we have all of these different options to choose from. Don't let it get overwhelm you. We simply want Pan and Zoom. Now, when you click on it, nothing seems to happen, just a blue box around it. Once that is done, you simply go down to Motion Designer, and this opens the Magic Motion Designer. Now, we have a lot going on on this screen, but don't be worried about it. You'll notice over here on the right, we have three things. We have a preview window, we have tilt options, and then we have the aspect ratios. You almost never have to touch the right-hand side. All right, it's, it's there, you can make modifications, but for the most part, there's never a need for you to do that. So we're gonna go and focus our attention over here on the left. Now this is where everything that we care about is at. First off, notice the red diamond on the left. This is my starting keyframe, and it's only red because it is the active frame. The one on the right is my ending keyframe, and you notice right now that it's orange. This simply means that one is what I want it to look like in the beginning, and this is where I make those modifications, and one is what I want it to look like when it ends, and when later on I'll click on that, and that's what this one's for. So we're gonna keep it on this one, um, on the left. The image above that is the image that you are going to be modifying. The white box is what people are going to see and corresponds to the preview window. So as you can see, when I modify this, I move it in and out. The preview window in the upper right also modifies. All right, so you can see when I do this, it zooms in, and when I pull out, it zooms out. All right, so this is important because later on, when we go from one of these keyframes to the next, that will determine if you zoom in or zoom out. All right, then you have the blue circle. The blue circle is the active point on the key on the timeline that's being modified. So the blue matches with the red, the orange matches with the orange. Why Cyberlink didn't make the two match up the same? Why is it when you click on blue, it's not blue in the left. I don't know. Don't know what the UI logic is there, but that is what you have to work with. So for right now, since we're just playing around with this, we're gonna make sure that we're blue here. And if you wanna move around the whole box, 
you actually have to hover over the blue and then you're able to move the whole box. So we're just going to move this down here some. All right, and then we're going to move to the next one. Now there's multiple ways to get to this last one. I can simply click on it. I could go down here where you see there's a little arrow with a diamond. That'll let me get to the next keyframe. Or I could simply click on the diamond over here itself in the timeline. But we don't necessarily want to do that, so I'm just going to go up and click here because this is kind of like quick access to it. And you notice that on this particular case, it filled the whole screen. I don't want that. What I want to do is zoom in on the sun. So I'll make this really small. Bring this down here. There we go. And as you can see in the preview window, that fills up most of the most of the screen. So we'll click back over here and we'll press play. You can see in the preview window that it zooms in on the sun. All right, but if I do it again, now this time pay attention to the left side, and you'll see that blue dot going along the panning line. Boom. All right. And then if you like what you have, you can simply click OK. And then you can test it out inside PowerDirector. All right, but now what if you wanted that to go much faster? Well, the timeline for the image is actually controlled here, so I could drag it to the left, make the image technically smaller, um, smaller time frame, take this, move this back over. Now watch when I press play. Boom, it goes really quick. Now I can do the same thing, but this time I'm gonna make it longer. Let's make it around 10 seconds. All right, press play. All right, and this gives the feel that there's this really long zoom, that it takes a long time, like you might be recording this with a camera or something. And that's kind of the purpose of the Ken Burns effect. You can take static images and give them some type of movement that kind of brings it to life. So instead of showing static image after static image, this way you can even make those a little more interactive. But, so, so really that's it. Or is it? So let's move on and let's do the bonus round. So let's say you want to do something really fancy. What if you wanted it to zoom, pan, zoom out and pan, zoom back in? What would you do to make that work? Well, we'll go back to our image, which we modified earlier. We'll go again and click on our magic tools, click on our magic motion. Now this time you'll see that user defined has been activated and it has the blue box around it. That is the one we want. So it's going to go back to the one we just got done modifying, and now you're going to click Motion Designer again. All right, and again, as I said before, this is a timeline down here. As I click this, you can actually see the blue dot move along the green panning line. And so what we want to do is click over here, go over and click on the Add Keyframe at the current location. You click it, and we're going to move along, and we're going to do it again. And again, and again. All right, so we've done that. And what I'm gonna do is take this last one. So where I want it to end now, instead of ending at the sunset, I want it to end down the beach. And I want it to start down at this end of the beach. But first, let's get this all zoomed in. You can see, again, moving the white box. I'll let you control that. All right, we'll go about that far. Again, we want to make sure that this is all right. Click on the next one, and we'll just do some quick modifications. And you got to play with this a little bit to get the timing and everything right. All right, so now you're going to see that it's just going to pan along this line, and sometimes zooming in and zooming out. As we click these, you can see in the preview window that it's zooming in and zooming out. So in this particular case, it zooms out. In this case, it zooms in, zooms back out, zooms back in, but we want it to zoom in even in more. We'll move this right on top of the sun. All right, nice, beautiful sunset. Then we go here. And this will basically work on its way out. And when we get to the last one, what we want is we want this to be big enough that we can still see the sun. So we'll move this over, move it up. 
All right, so this will make it zoom up or zoom out up. All right, so now what we're going to do is when we get to this one over here, well, we'll do a preview first. Let's do a preview. All right, and you can see over here, zooms in and zooms out, focuses all the way on the sun, zooms back out. All right, now we'll go here, and what we're going to do is we're going to click this duplicate. This duplicate keyframe is the one with the two diamonds and a plus. When you click on it, it's going to ask you, do you want to duplicate the previous or next? All right, and we're going to do next because that is where the sun's at. You notice that keyframe moved, and what it did is it took it from there and moved it here. And since the keyframe, the next two keyframes are at the exact same location, this is not going to move. So when we do our preview, you'll see that it's going to stop right here on the sun for a little bit and then continue moving on. All right, zooming in, zooming down to the sun, wait it there a little bit, and then starts zooming back out. All right, that's all there is to it. And you can have all types of these going in different directions and you can really get it out of control. So we'll, I'm gonna play a little bit more with this. See how much we can get out of this. So we're gonna start really zoomed in. All right, we'll have this kind of zoom up in the sky a little bit. All right, then we'll come back down here. As you can see, it's zoomed in a little. We'll have it zoom in a little bit more. It's really zoomed in here. We'll have this zoom out some. And then there, that'll be our finished time. So we'll go and we'll press stop, which will actually push it all the way back over to the left, as you see. And then we hit play. All right, pause there for a little bit. And then it moves on. So really, that is all there is to it. Um, and, and if you might have noticed how fast some of these moved um, versus other ones, the reason for that is because the closer to keyframes on the timeline, the size of the zoom in or zoom out, and the further apart of keyframes are in the image itself, the faster that transition. So you have to play with it to get the feel that you want. Remember the timeline, so this timeline that's here and how long it's lasting overall is based off of um, the Power Director timeline outside of this screen. So we'll go ahead and click OK. We'll do one last preview here. All right, comes out, zooms back in, goes over to the sun. It's going to pause there for a little bit and zooms back out. All right, that is it. So this week, what you should do is take some time, play with this effect, and I assure you, once you do, you will love it, and you'll use it all the time. If you like this video, and if there's any functionality of PowerDirector you would like me to tackle, please just let me know. With that, my friends, may God bless you in your video-making endeavors. This is Curtis F. Taylor, signing off.